And interestingly enough, they have chosen to have Carlson finish on the right, which means that Weber and McDowell are going to have the same lineup that they wanted in the first match with McDowell finishing on that left lane where he struck out. You know, if he didn't strike out, Jakes doesn't even need a mark. Bill Beach leaving the bucket with his first shot. Boy, what a beautiful arm swing Bill Beach has. 57 years old, he won our first seniors event in 1980. And interestingly enough, when I was watching him and talking to him in practice, Denny, <laughs> Matt was telling me how he thought Beach's ball would react better on the right lane, and now they've changed their decision at the last minute. You know, lots of strategy employed, especially in a doubles competition. At the bucket, and chops it right away. Well, Bill a little upset with himself there, but boy, the first shot on national television to leave that bucket, that's an awful tough spare to have to master. <laughs> oh, brother. Yeah. You know, Mike, obviously, you've been there many times. Dick Weber on the right-hand lane, and uh, Weber and McDowell, I think, uh, have given up at least one of their nine lives here this evening thus far in game number one. See how loose they get now. Never fails. When you give a champion an opportunity to come back, especially on the PBA Tour, they normally come storming back. Dang right. They always did against me. I know that. Right about over the second arrow. Ninth board, board right of it. Seemed to hook right there and then stop here. Kind of hooked early and then set up with the pocket. Well, that old seven pin took off like a rocket. Mark McDowell in search of PBA title number one. His partner has 29. <laughs> Well, Dick Weber looks like he's 30 years of age. I'm sure he'd probably love to have 30 titles to go right along with him. He's amazing. He never seems to change. And I was watching him at practice at 57 years of old. He still throws the ball so well. Although I'd never tell him that. That better stay on the lane. Oh, just barely nicks it. Weber shifts seats. <laughs> Mark McDowell heads back to the bench and gets a quick high five from his partner. The average age of the seniors making the telecast here this evening, 56.4 years. And for the touring pros, 26.2 years of age. So, geez, they're and twice you, as young. You know who the old man of the touring pros is? Who? This fellow that's up right here. Yeah, that he, figures. He's a flat 30. Not. Oh, that's right, Matt Carlson, yeah. Well, he's about as steady a player as you're going to find on the PBA Tour. So Carlson opens up with a strike, and uh, Bill Beach, I'm sure, will settle down here on the left-hand lane. Beach, just looking at him, though, appears uptight. He just really looks tense right now. He needs some kind of a good shot, good break to get him a little bit more relaxed and loose. Bill shot a 300 game in the third game of round number one here in Green Bay. Looks smooth. Oh, there it is. He knocked that 8-10 out, and he says, thank you. And so a double. So Beach and Carlson kind of fight back and right the ship a little bit here early in match number two. Dick Weber, who was the first player on the television practice pair this evening, and uh, the last one, I think, to leave, got one last shot in there, trying to take full advantage of the 45-minute practice time. He says, oh, I'm glad that baby sat down for me in the pocket on lane 16. There were some doubts in his mind. Well, actually, he's thrown every ball in the pocket. He left a 10-pin, which he missed in the first game, and a 5-pin, which he made. And he's got two strikes here. Now he says McDowell. And remember, Mark McDowell was using that towel to clean out that thumb hole every time in Tucson. And he's doing it here, too. It's part of his little ritual. Mark McDowell averaged 222.8 this week. Average 247 in round number three of qualifying. This youngster can uh, light up the scoreboard when he's given the opportunity. Boy, he really thumped that one. And, uh, boy, you can almost see it, Mike. When he gives it that little extra, that ball really turns about 30 feet. Absolutely. you got to spot it, Denny. He got that another six inches out on the lane. And, you know, and he did it all with his fingers. And that ball just hooked sooner and hit harder and too hard. Left that four pin. He throws straight at the spares. Lots of speed, covers up on the four pin, so we've got a very close match here in match number two. The team of McDowell and Weber leading by just one.
for three in a row. And the soft 10 pin. Boy, this is, uh, this is exciting here in, in Green Bay, Mike. They even cheer the half 10s here. When you leave a 10 pin, they're so excited that you've got nine they cheer. Crowds were just sensational this week. Yeah, I went and walked in and was listening to him last night. <laughs> Thought you were at a football game. Yeah. That better oh. hang on. Well, mm -hmm. we've seen two of them missed over there. Must be awfully slick, Mike. Going cross lane. Usually, you know, in the practice session, they shoot. I saw Spezio shooting a lot of different spares in practice. And we see switch balls, which some people recommend against. I know I missed one the same way in a important tournament one time. I, can, I switched balls. and uh, mm -hmm. Matt's just simply ran out of lane there on lane 16. His senior partner tries to pick him up, and he does. Nice strike on the left-hand lane for Bill Beach. Now Dick Weber will go back to work on lane 16. Weber... And McDowell lead by 14 by virtue of the uh, missed 10 pin. Boy, how many years have you seen that profile? Lots. Something has distracted his concentration all the way. Somebody's talking and he can hear him. It's not us. <laughs> no, we were quiet then for a change. Eh? <laughs> well, it gets so quiet in the championship round that uh, the slightest little distraction can throw you off. And it definitely did throw him off. Weber tried to pull the string a little bit, but uh, the eight count is about all he comes up with on the right-hand lane. Dick Weber, by virtue of making the top 24 this week, or actually the final 18, is now the all-time leader in surviving in match play in PBA history. He's now made 289 top 24 finishes. Doesn't surprise me. <laughs> the man's been around forever. 289, Mike? That's like getting 754 homers. I mean... Who do you go around? You went around Salvino? Yep. Carmen Salvino who got a check this week, but didn't quite get to the finals. Boy, they've been battling each other for a good many years. I know, it's amazing. McDowell looking for his first strike in this second game. And well, uh, is lane 15 starting to break down a little bit, Mike Durbin? It appears that he's just got to make an adjustment, either with uh, his feet or to give the ball a little bit more room. It's a good break. Goes right through the heart of the pins, leaves only the three pin. Reduces their lead to 11 if he makes the spare. No trouble. Big shot now for the team of Carlson and Beach. If they double up here, they can close the gap a little bit. Matt's Carlson with two career PBA victories. Matt's probably the slowest player on the uh, telecast tonight. Takes his time. Uh, not an excessive amount of time, but he definitely is in no hurry out there. It's a nice stroll for him. Very deliberate routine, one that he follows without Falder, each and every shot. Stuck a little bit. And right through the heart of the pins, the 4, 6, 7, 10. And right now, the turning players are not doing that well. Matt's opened in the fourth frame, and he's staring at an open here in the sixth frame. Well, it gives the double pinochle a run. That's the second time we've seen that split on lane 16, and it, uh, no matter how many times you look at that, it never looks very good. Oh. Did you ever make that, Mike? No, I have never made it. I've had it made against me, but I never made it. No kidding. Yeah, Jeff Mellinger made it at me one time to win the game. Oh, jeez. <laughs> and you had already penciled in 30 bonus yeah, Exactly out. right. Oh, I had to scratch geez. it out. How did I know that? That's funny. Yeah, there's never a time when you figure anybody's going to make that. Well, down by 25, it's up to the senior half of this team to pick up the slack. Well, Beach hits the pocket, but the ball deflected a little bit, and he left the soft 10. 25 pins, but we saw a turnaround in the last match. We're still searching here for somebody to get something going in this 
quarterfinal match. The average membership PBA wise for the seniors telecast this evening 21.6 years and for the touring players 4.4 years. Some of these seniors have been around a good long time throwing a lot of strikes and Bill Beach will have to come up with a couple of strikes here in game number two to help his team out and there you see Weber and McDowell they lead by 25. A few words about Royal Oak Charcoal with Mesquite. It comes in a bright yellow bag, starts fast, burns slow, gives everything you cook sweet, mellow mesquite flavor. Royal Oak, now with 33% more mesquite. That's a tall order. Morning, Fred. Morning. And there's a look at the 1963 PBA Player of the Year. Dick Weber. 744,000 career earnings. He's made a bunch of that on the senior tour. He's made about 60,000 or more on the senior tour. Yep, the leading money winner on the senior tour with in excess of $69,000. Light. Oh! Light and Mr. Weber ran that one back and sat down very quickly, and uh, it just doesn't get a whole heck of a lot better than that. How many years have you seen Dick Weber, as soon as he released it, kind of start backing up, realizing he had really thrown a good shot? Oh. <laughs> he always had that classy way of running out strikes. Right now... Mark McDowell would like to run out one of his own. He's looking for his first strike in this match. And their team of McDowell and Weber looking for their first double. There it is. Well, that almost looked like the old frozen rope of Dick Weber there. <laughs> Fans uh, reacting rather warmly to that right now. Carlson and Beach are saying, hey, I've got to strike out. There's Weber's famous delivery of the line called the best foul line correction bowler ever. Matt's Carlson in a world of trouble right now. His team trails by 35 and we're in the eighth frame. Oh, boy, nothing is going right for Matt's Carlson. The amazing thing about Matt's is uh, he's very unemotional, at least on the outside, and uh, you just get the impression sometimes that you're not meant to win when you throw an absolutely perfect shot like that and you leave the old stone eight. Especially in a situation where they needed it strike desperately. They were still potential 202 if they got that one, but now it's down to 191. Weber and McDowell with a potential of 237. So Matt Carlson covers up on the eight pin. It's a congratulatory tap from his senior partner, Bill Beach, who has informed me that he'll be... All set and ready to go. Head down to Canton, Ohio to bowl that PBA Seniors Championship just a couple of weeks away. All the seniors are looking forward to that one. Oh, what a terrific event. Janet Bueller and her bunch at Hall of Fame Lanes in Canton. They really roll out the red carpet for the senior pros. And Beach, who threw every ball but one in the pocket. He left a lot of 10 pins this week as it was, but right now his team is almost buried. Best they can get is 180 if he makes this and they strike out, and Weber and McDowell would have to totally fall apart to score less than that. The team of Bill Beach and Nats Carlson led this tournament for a good many games this week. Finished up qualifying in the number three slot. But should they finish third, they'll split a nice check for $10,000. Dick Weber has never failed to cash in a PBA Seniors event. He's won three of them. Not bad. Trying to win four tonight. And he's made, what, eight top five top finishes three. out of 12? Right. He's a pretty solid bet in these things. Perhaps one of his best shots and left a four pin. Would have been interesting if his son Pete had made the finals this that would week. have been Weber and Weber oh gee many Christmas that'd have been a tremendous team or if maybe Pete would have had the bowl against him that'd have been even more interesting ah, I can imagine of course they probably bowled a few matches for a few cokes through the years in St. Louis don't you think I imagine wonder who's ahead now well, Mark McDowell can uh, tie the bow in a nice knot here Seems he only needs five pins. 
That's enough right there. Well, the five pin was heading towards the seven, and something got in his way, but uh, that's enough for victory number two here. Well, two more in their home. Two more in their home, huh? Long they, way to go all the way up that ladder, though. They're going to have to go against matches. my old doubles partner in the next match. Les Schisler. The fans obviously enjoying game number two. Bill Beach and Nance Carlson, I think, probably a little disappointed in what happened out there. Had aspirations of yet another PBA title for each of them. And a nice clean game, 205 with a strike. McDowell only got one strike in the left lane, and they wound up winning the match. In this match, they only got four strikes so far total, but it's not how many. It's uh, whether you win or lose. That's right. They had eight strikes in the opening game. That's right. Well, they had five in game number two. Nice power strike. Dick Weber quickly up off the bench. Congratulates Mark McDowell and Max Carlson to simply finish out game number two. I tell you what, if I were the team of Columbia and Sisler coming on, I would schedule it so that Weber had to finish on the right lane or make them change their lineup. And isn't it always that way? Everything falls down when it doesn't mean anything for Max Carlson. See, they can come on. Columbia and Sisler can come on and they can say they, maybe they want Columbia to finish on the left lane. So they, can, they would make McDowell start the match. But in the last second, then the team of Weber and McDowell could say, no, we want to switch our lineup and put Weber over in that left lane so McDowell would finish on the right. But then they'd have to, you know, they're bowling on different lanes. And at this point in time, would you, would you dare to change lanes, Mike, if you were out there? No, I wouldn't. But, uh, but I know, they only shot 205 that game, too. That I know, that'd be but, good enough to win. But Weber is adamant that he wants McDowell to finish. He wants, see, he wants to have... The senior himself bowl only five frames as opposed to a potential seven shots for the turning player if he strikes out in the tenth frame. Okay, well, we'll wait and find out what strategy they employ. It is rather interesting, though. A little different than the normal singles competition. Well, Matt Carlson puts the finishing touches on a 180 game. Obviously disappointed, but nevertheless, finishing like a true professional. So Beach and Carlson finish up in that number four position. There you see.